Thank you very much, Alex. Good afternoon, everyone. One game from Wembley. Well, Aston Villa have already had their best ever league season. It became their, can it become their most memorable one? They have the sizeable hurdle to clear in Chelsea, their opponents, imperious in this competition in recent seasons, and are still on course for a third consecutive FA Cup triumph. High stakes here in Walsall, the second semi-final of this season's FA Cup. The winners to play Manchester United at Wembley. So here are your two teams. The two sides played each other in the WSL two weeks ago. Chelsea were comfortable 3-0 winners. Villa made just one change from that team. Sarah Mayling returns from injury at right back. Laura Binkiller brown drops to the bench. Kenza Daly keeps up her record of starting every single game in all competitions this season. Rachel Daly has scored six in the FA Cup, including four in the first round against Fylde. Remy Allen and Simone McGill are both named on the bench after lengthy knee injuries. There's more injury trouble for Chelsea. Kadisha Buchanan added to the list of absentees. Five changes from the win here a fortnight ago. Eve Perise, Marin Mielder, Melanie Lerpols, Erin Cuthbert and Lauren James all come in. Sam Kerr notched her 50th WSL goal last time out and helped Australia end England's unbeaten run under Serena Beekman over the international break. Penilla Harder, who's been out with a hamstring injury since November, is named among the substitutes. So a couple of players, Farrah Williams, you wanted to highlight, starting with Staniforth, lining up in a more familiar position today. Yeah, I think we heard Aston Villa manager Carl Ward mention that they need more possession. I felt like in the WSL fixture, they missed somebody like Lucy Staniforth in the middle, controlling that possession for Aston Villa. So in a much preferred position, and with Savina Beegman in the stand here, she'll want to make an impression for the Lionesses come the summer. And a regular for the Lionesses now, Jess Carter started both games over the international break and is a regular now with Chelsea. What has she got to face today? I think in the absence of Buchanan and Minnie Bright, I think it's crucial that, you know, that, uh, Jess Carter steps up today against Rachel Daly, who's in form for the Aston Villa with goals. So I think it will be a different challenge for her today, and I'd imagine her to play a different position. The referee today is Cheryl Foster. And the winners will make it to Wembley. The two managers, Carla Ward and Emma Hayes, in good spirits ahead of this one. I'm sure once it all kicks off, the mood might change. A touch, both fiercely competitive, and as mentioned in the build-up, Carla Ward rightly said that the win against Manchester City in the semi-final was the biggest in their history. This certainly would top that. They've struggled against Chelsea. They've never beaten them. They've never even drawn against them in their previous nine meetings. So this would be an absolutely monumental result for a team on the rise in Aston Villa. Both teams take the knee ahead of the kick-off as they have done in every single domestic fixture so far this season. And Aston Villa get us underway in the claret and blue. Chelsea depleted, but still have that fear factor. They know how to win, and they've shown, even when their backs are against the wall, especially in the Champions League this season, they just know how to get it done, Farah. Yeah, they have that know-how. They've shown that over the years. Their winning mentality under Emma Hayes has certainly strengthened over the years. It'll be a difficult afternoon for Aston Villa, but one, I'm sure the players and the manager are looking forward to one game away from an FA Cup final. Here is Rachel Daly. Away from Melly Lerpols, who is wearing a protective mask. She broke her nose in the incredible win against Leon in the second leg of their Champions League game. Sam Kerr closing down the keeper. Out of play, and it is a throw for Chelsea. As always, Barra question marks as to how Chelsea line up. I'm just trying to work that out. I think with all the injuries Chelsea have got coming back off international, and they have a lot of internationals within their team, it's just trying to find the information. Uh, sorry, the formation that will best suit Chelsea this afternoon. But 
they look as if they're playing with a, a flat back four, maybe one just sitting in front and then a four and just Sam Kerr, you know, up front alone by herself. So, yeah, it's interesting how the game will develop with this formation. Sam Kerr as well to turn away from the challenge there. Mobs trying to find Daly. Well defended by Mielder, plays it back to the goalkeeper, the flag is up anyway. But Buchanan and Bright have been the preferred centre-half pairing. It's Ericsson and Mielder today, so perhaps something that Villa could exploit. Yeah, but these are both very experienced centre-halves and over the years have served this Chelsea women's team very well. Two exciting centre-halves that I've certainly enjoyed watching, very smart. So I think in terms of understanding Rachel Daly's movement, I know they probably, and Mielder probably doesn't have the pace to pick up with Daly. She certainly has the experience and, and know-how. So, yeah, I think it's a very good centre-half pair in there for Chelsea and smart from Emma Hayes to go with those two. Well won by Kurt. And a crucial intervention there by Turner. Guru Wrighton was threatening to latch onto it in behind. I think, yeah, Dan Turner does well to cover that. I think her positioning originally from the first ball was probably a little bit wrong, flat-footed, and you can't allow Wrighton to have the run on you. So good recovery defending from Turner there. First corner of the game inside the first three minutes. It looks like it's going to be Perisay to take it. Wrighton uh, not looking 100% comfortable. We'll keep an eye on that. Chelsea can ill afford more injuries. Big semi-final in the Champions League coming up as well as this one. Here comes the corner away by Daly. But strong header away and Alicia Lehman will try and bring this one away. Chelsea defend the through ball. It's back in the possession of Villa. And Hampton back in the number one position between the sticks and also back in the England squad. So going out with personal reasons. A swing from Lauren James, she's caught Pacheco, free kick for Villa. Yeah, slight, slightly caught, slightly late there from Lauren James, but Maz Pacheco certainly playing on that a little bit, but clever. You see here, she just catches her on the toe. They, they are sore, but not enough to, to go down, but I think, you know, something that Aston Villa will want to do, they'll want to game manage and, and delaying time and slowing down Chelsea's play will be uh, one that I think they'll use this afternoon. She's someone you'd know quite well, isn't it? That's Pacheco, there is Carla Ward, and she has taken on Aston Villa another level, guided them to ninth last season, and they've cemented pretty much fifth this time out, and they could be the season's disruptors they might have a big say in where the title goes as we reach the business end of the WSL season. Look, what an achievement. It's already been, but incredible that she managed to get her side to Wembley. Over the top from Cuthbert. Hampton has all the time in the world. There is Patton on loan from Arsenal. That's a good looking ball towards Lehman. Chelsea in retreat. Lehman couldn't quite get the cross off. Musevic gathers. Danger. Yeah, Chelsea are playing a, a really high line here. You can see here the line is, is really high, and one ball is beating the whole back four. And with the pace that Aston Villa have in their front three, I think it's a bit risky to play that line. You see here, great recovery from Jess Carter to get herself in a position to make a challenge. But the start position, I think, is too high from the Chelsea back four. Getting a bit of joy already, but here's Sam Kerr. No one engaging. This could be trouble. Girl Ryan couldn't find her feet. There's Jordan Nobbs for Villa. Now Lehman. Goes down well. Chelsea try and win it back with Aaron Cuthbert. No foul. And there is one on Kenza Dali, though. late there from Cuthbert. I think it was come from the frustration just moments earlier. Cuthbert felt she should have got the foul. Here's the Sam, Car uh, Sam Kerr chance where she just gets into a really good position and drives towards the box. And a danger player for Chelsea. Again, the long ball over the top. 
really pays off for Villa. Perisay manages to get the ball down the line for Lauren James. Bit of space to run into here. Trying to get around Pacheco. Does really well there. Standard fourth again, allowed to pick her head up, tries to find Nobbs. Daly's there for the knockdown. Hansen, and now Darley. Decent enough start from Villa, but they had a decent enough start in the WSL game a couple of weeks ago, and they ended up 3-0 down. Yeah, they started well, but I think they've also started at an intensity that Chelsea are quite comfortable defending. So I think if they up the intensity, I think especially the amount of international players this Chelsea team have, they might struggle. 17 away on the international duty for Chelsea. Here's Jordan Nobbs. Four times an FA Cup winner with Arsenal. Positive play from Dali. Cross is blocked. Chelsea will try and bring it away. Aimless ball forward. I think Aston Villa just have to be careful when they're going forward. I think they're committing a lot of bodies forward to try and get that goal, but what they're leaving themselves vulnerable at the back with Sam Kerr's pace, it only takes one long ball in behind and giving Sam Kerr a chance, it could be a completely different game. Nobbs. Hansen's made the run forward, but Musevic off her line quickly. England coach here watching on with interest quite a few in the squad and also knocking on the door hoping to get on the plane for that long flight to Australia Daly back helping out lays it back to Pacheco Daly turning away from the challenge asking quite a lot of laymen there you can see what the tactic is from Villa. Yeah, you, you can see they are wanting to go beyond this Chelsea back line. They probably see a potential with this, the, the speed in the Villa front line. But Rach Daly, for me, is dropping far too deep to collect the ball. It should be her that's making those advanced runs, not her playing those passes. But, yeah, we'll see how that develops throughout the half. Well worth a watch in the build-up. Interview with... Rachel Daly and her dog Dexy, who apparently has a number of Instagram followers, more than we could ever wish for. Daly, again trying to play it out to the far side to Lehman, cleared up well by Carter. And the bounce of the ball just favouring Villa at the moment, but Daly can't get onto Patton's ball forward. James, exchanging passes with Chankovic. Leopold's turned out for Germany for the first time over the international break since she gave birth last October. James on to Chankovic. She had time to measure the cross, but tried to play in James. In the end, it's off Pacheco for another corner. I feel like Lauren James can be a little bit more positive in her play when she picks up the ball. Every time it's gone to her, she's looking for those comfortable passes. The first time she's actually played a forward pass, she's created something for her team, so I feel like she needs to be more positive when she receives the ball. Second core of the game for Chelsea. And Perise delivers. Ericsson got ahead to it, but straight into the gloves of Hannah Hampton. It's a good delivery. It's a driven corner. I quite like these driven ones because it just needs to be guided towards goal, but just not enough on it from Ericsson there. But a good effort towards goal. Good movement from Ericsson. Well, Darley's lost it in a dangerous area. Kerr trying to play in. Guru Wrighton and good strength from Mailing. I'm interested. 
first and one. I thought they both had each other's arm. You can see there right in. So in, in live play, I felt Malin was the one that was giving the foul away. You can clearly see on the replay, it was uh, right and trying to be clever. A good matchup down that left hand side. Right and against Malian, an up and coming uh, full back for Aston Villa. Good young player. And uh, right and very experienced and in great form. So it's a good challenge down that left hand side. Six goals in the last ten appearances for Guru Wrighton. Parisay trying to flick it past Kirsty Hansen, who read it well. She's given it away here, Lerpols. Now James. Chelsea have already reached the cup final this season, but they lost it. Selhurst Park to Arsenal. Again, asking a little bit too much. Trankovic seen out of play by Anna Patton. I imagine that that's going to be a bit obstructive, isn't it? I think that would be my excuse if I had a bad game that I couldn't see out of either side. Uh, so, yeah, I certainly wouldn't be able to play with that around my head. But she's actually having a good game with that on her. You're right, though, it's a, it's a good physical excuse, <laughs> ready-made. Now the free kick given to Chelsea. Just a little bit late for Maylin. You can see Wrighton's already released the pass before the challenge, so he's in a bit of a dangerous area here for Aston Villa to defend. And Eriksen got ahead to the ball to the last one. That's taken short to Cuthbert. Nearly overran it. Referee waves play on. She got the ball. Here's Lauren James. Flashes it wide. Did well to work the space, but off target. Yeah, it's a big chance for Chelsea. Lauren James, and I'm sure she would have expected herself to hit the target. You can see here, Mads Pacheco's down in the middle of the park, and it actually come from Erin Cuthbert taking a really heavy touch in the middle of the park and then has to lunge at the ball um, and I think she just catches her with a follow through you'll see here she's had to lunge because her touch wasn't great and she's just caught Maz Pacheco as well but an experienced referee uh, you know enforced that she's played before so she knows the game and I think she played the advantage quite well there certainly took the ball first but got Pacheco as well she's up and this was the James chance that Hannah Hampton was fairly confident was going wide yeah, I felt she should have took it earlier. The ball got stuck under Lauren James's feet. Mailing down the line. Looking for Alicia Lehman, who's in behind here. It's Lehman, and it's a really good challenge from Ericsson. Looks like she was offside. Mm. Again, the flag was up. It looked pretty close. Really close. She looks like she could be onside here. I think Ericsson herself plays her on. Um, but a tight one. A tight one. A tight call there for the, the linesman. Really trying to utilise that pace of Alicia Lehman down the right-hand side. Swiss international. Runner-up with West Ham United in the FA Cup back in 2019. Shankovic. Oh, a great touch from Jess Carter, which has made up for it with a good second one. On the corner. I think that's what you have when you have a striker like Sam Kerr up front for you. She, her hold up play and her awareness and strength of people around her. You saw the ball forward to her from the elder. Just dropped in. She just wins the knockdown. Really good header. Starting them early. Tremendous. Was 
well worked. Sent low by Guru Wrighton and sent over the top by Lauren James. Again, could have done a bit better with that. She was unmarked. Yeah, it really worked. Corner here, as you mentioned, Wrighton just plays it hard and low on the floor and James finds herself free. I think it, it looks as if it just bubbles up. It's either it's just bubbled up here or she's leaning back as she strikes. You just saw the bubble, a slight bubble, plus Lauren James leaning back. It's only going to go one way and that's up and over the crossbar. Emma Hayes, 11 major trophies and has played 9-1-9 against Aston Villa as Chelsea coach. Not bad, that. 11 major trophies in 10 years. <laughs> Some will go in that. Cuthbert, good first touch to set her on her way. Finds Wrighton. Runners ahead of her, still going Guru Wrighton. <laughs> Sam Kerr making the run over on the far side. Now for a goal kick. I think this is where Aston Villa can be vulnerable on that turnover. They're committing so many bodies forward. Once that line broke, you saw five Chelsea players running against an Aston Villa back four. They didn't get it right in this occasion, Chelsea. But this is something that Aston Villa certainly need to look at when they're attacking. Poles. Good run by Chankovic, but tracked well. Well won back by Lauren James and receives it back from Chankovic. James with the centre. Guru Wrighton couldn't reach it. Retrieved here by Erin Cuthbert. Good spell this from Chelsea. Lerpoles. Works it to Perisay. play from Chelsea just keep possession nicely find another point of attack Perisse now James delivers the ball towards Kerr Stanforth stoops there's a player down here Chankovic just, just happened off the ball as the cross was coming in from Lauren James Chankovic looked as if she was body checked I don't know if you could see that back. She wasn't down for long. You can just see here, she goes to make a run, and I think it's a blind run, and Staniforth just stands the ground. It's a, it's a body check. It's naughty that from uh, Lucy Staniforth. She knows what she's doing there, and she's got away with one. A difficult one for Cheryl Foster to spot that one. I think Emma Hayes did, though. Jordan Nobbs, Lehman, challenged by Carter. <laughs> Perisay, positive play, trying to play in Kurt. Just about deals with that. Look at this one again, Stanley Forth. I just think you can see, I think you can see from the replay, Lucy Stanley Forth knows what she's doing. I'm, I'm unsure if she deliberately wanted to, you know, put a, a forearm in, into, into the boat, but she certainly knows what she's doing. She's trying to body check her and, and stop her from running into the box. Chankovic has given her the benefit of the doubt, sportingly.
Chelsea still fighting on three fronts. FA Cup, WSL and Champions League. Two-legged tie against Barcelona next up for them. And they are second in the WSL, one point behind Manchester United, but with a game in hand. Patton allowed to stride forward. Lehman delivers. Carter can't prevent the corner. Corner kick right in front of the Villa fans. Around 5,000 expected today. Standing fourth delivers away by Cuthbert. Picked up by Mailing. Now Kenza Darling. Good block from Jess Carter. Committed defender. Very good. Jess Carter's a very good 1v1 defender. Probably one of the, the best in the league at that. And Pacheco could be in a bit of trouble here. Out of position. Lauren James making good ground. Needs a bit of support, or does she? It's James. And the covering challenge from Turner just took the sting out of the shot. And Turner does really well, just to delay Lauren James, allow some of her recovering defenders to get back. You can see here she stands right well, she does, she keeps the gap between herself and Lauren James, you know, big enough, or should I say short enough, to enable her to block the shot. So really good defending from Turner there. But this is the same thing I was talking about a little bit earlier in the game, those transition moments for Aston Villa. Chelsea seem to be outnumbering them in those transition moments in the attack, and they need to be wary of this, because Chelsea could score from one of those. Kirsty Hansen, a little bit of a push, too much, according to the referee. It was too obvious from Hansen, it just wasn't needed. She's in a really good position there to give herself half a chance, and she just shoves Premise in the back here, you can just see it. Doesn't need to do it. She's going nowhere with the ball and potentially could give her, you know, certainly get her team up, up the pitch. Hansen thinks that Perisay went down a little easy, but she had every right to. Midpoint of the first half. Competitive game so far, as it was yesterday at Lee's Sports Village, Brighton running Manchester United extremely close. A Rachel Williams winner, right at the death to send Manchester United to Wembley. Patton. A good interception. Finds Lehman. Trying to get past Carter, which is not an easy task at all. Wrighton holds it up beautifully. Cuthbert. This is promising. Chankovic. Finds Kerr. Awkward height for James. Perisay. Villa now back in a good shape, forcing Chelsea back. Chelsea just look quite comfortable with the ball, playing the game at their own pace, intensity, which is what they need off the back of a, an international break. Wrighton, Kerr stabs it towards goal. Lack the power. Interesting one from Sam Kerr, the way it, it's, a, it's a great delivery here from right and hard and low into a really good area. And good movement you see from Sam Kerr to get herself free, but she's gone with the outside of the right foot and tried to stab at it. I'd have thought she would have gone with the left foot and come onto it a little bit more and hit it hard and low. She just took the speed, the pace out of the ball, go with her right foot. Say a little short, but 
quick off the mark. Lerpol's crossfield diagonal is cut out, but only as far as Cuthbert. Wrighton for Chelsea. All mailing a bit too casual there. Can't afford to do that when Aaron Cuthbert's about. And Chelsea win it back. It's James! Inches wide. It's a really good effort. It's Aston Villa playing himself into trouble through the middle of the park. You can see here, Stanaforth plays it into Dali. She tries to drop her shoulder. Good interception. And then Lauren James from the edge of the box. It's a great effort towards go hard and low. Inches wide. We scored two in the home win at Kings Meadow against Villa. She hasn't scored it for Chelsea since February. The semi final of the Continental Cup against West Ham. Chankovic, who dropped to the shoulder over the top for Kerr. Hampton was off her line and the flag is up. Looked like a tight one. It's a, it was a cute pass over the top from Chankovic. You can see here, Sam looks as if she's on here. This this ball here from Chankovic. And a beautifully timed one for Kerr. Another one, uh, both ends, arguably onside. One for Villa and one for Chelsea. But it was a great little pass forward from Chankovic. Kenza Dali through the legs to find Pacheco. Corner kick. So I feel like it can cause some problems. And Kenza Dali over this one. Let's see what Aston Villa could do from, from a set piece. They'll be important in the game set piece, I believe. It's a deep cross towards the back post. Kept alive. Staniforth. Now mailing. <laughs> Turn it towards Knobs. the half hour mark Chelsea have had the best chances both of them fallen to Lauren James they've not been taken as you say Farrah wouldn't expect anything else but they look very comfortable yeah and it's a, it, it would have I, look Aston Villa look like a team that haven't played together for a couple of weeks with the international break but You'd have fought with so many internationals in this Chelsea team that Aston Villa would have played the game with more intensity and really tried to get at this Chelsea team. Jordan Nobbs pulled up for the foul. Free kick for Chelsea. Christian Perslow, the chief executive of Aston Villa, I'm speaking with him at half time. Could be an exceptional weekend after the men's results yesterday against Newcastle. Lehman. Cuthbert intercepts. And those precision balls, they need to be perfect. Right idea for Erin Cuff, but she knows she's got a winning runner in Sam Coe's movement is very good off the shoulders of centre half. So that pass for Chelsea is always on. It's just a little bit forced there for Erin Cuff, but an over hit.
moment. Into Mailing. Sent forward by Patton. Nobbs' touch. Its possession back to Chelsea. And apart from a couple of long passes down the flanks early on, they haven't really got near to the Chelsea goal. Villa. It's been too easy for Chelsea. You can see Jordan Nobbs is trying to get closer to Rach Daly and, and almost play as a, a front four when Villa are in possession. But what it leaves them is, is vulnerable in those central areas for second balls. And Chelsea have had the better of the second ball game in this opening 30 minutes. Chankovic on to Aaron Cuthbert. Pass cut out. That's a good, well timed challenge from Darley. Invites Hansen forward, gets onto that ball, needs a bit of support. Pacheco provides it. Here's Darley. Pacheco. They've let her go, and they've let Kirsty Hansen go. First big opportunity, and it's put well over the bar by Hansen. They do well, Villa, here from the throw-in to create an overload of a 3v2. You can just see here, they managed to create an overload here, 3v2, and Hansen finds herself special. She's got lots of time. She can drive even more so into the box before, you know, letting the shot go. But it's a good effort. One, I believe, that Hansen could have done better with, at least tested the keeper here. And we're right behind the dugout. And Carla Ward is living every moment of this semi-final. Former player herself, of course. On both sides of the white line. Staniforth. Again, no one really getting close to her, allowed to progress forward. That's not a bad ball. Rachel Daly couldn't get it on target. Retrieved here by Hansen. Trying to work the space. Good defending by Mielder. Horse back. Here's Staniforth. Now Pacheco. Hansen gets the cross in towards Daly. It came off a Chelsea defender. Really good build up play from Villa. And how close was Rachel Daly to getting on the end of that? Two big chances for Villa. The early one from the cross, and then you can see here this one. Hansen does well to get half a yard and put one, fire one across the box. And Ericsson does really well to just get a block on Rachel Daly's touch. You see here, Rachel Daly gets the initial touch. And Ericsson gets her body in, in line with it and blocks it and puts it out for a corner. Really good defending. But two big chances for Villa. Here comes the corner. Darley. Lehman tries to keep it going. It's going to be retrieved here by Nobbs, but out of play. Here's what else is coming up for you on the BBC Women's Six Nations. 3 o'clock on iPlayer, France against Scotland. And then a huge game in the WSL on BBC Three. Wednesday, 5 past 7, Manchester United against Arsenal. Could be a crucial one in the race for the title and the Champions League places as well. from Mailing, but standing forth there to get her out of a bit of trouble there. Kirsty Hansen getting into the game a little bit more, and only Gua Wrighton has recorded more assists than her this season in the WSL. Yeah, Hansen's had a, a really good season for Aston Villa, as you mentioned there, with the assists and a couple of goals, but when she gets the ball and goes direct, she can cause fullbacks, you know, real problems. You can just see here, a little bit late there on Malin and the free kick past the Villa. She turns 25 tomorrow. Could Celebrations might depend on the result today. I was going to say that, exactly that. There will be none if they don't get to a final, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm not sure Carla Ward will want, not want too many either way. <laughs> 
pressure on it, Aston Villa. A few corners on the bounce now for them. They should, you know, they want to hit the target of one of these corners or at least come up with a set piece that is going to cause this Chelsea team problem. Chelsea have defended these fairly well, actually. These corner kicks, first contact. See what they can do from this one. Stanley Forth, just over the head of Rachel Daly. Lehman shows a really good turn of pace. It's too big, the delivery from Lucy Staniforth. Driven, too long, and it clears the whole of the Aston Villa line. Darley. Good challenge from James. from Daly, Hansen couldn't take possession, here's Pacheco, now Dali, a few claims for handball, didn't look like it. Turner, picked up by Dali, good strength away from Lerpols, pokes it out of play. Starting to get the game now, Dali. I think that's what Aston Villa have missed. When they play direct, they bypass Dali, who can have an impact if he can get on the ball in those higher areas. We're starting to see that. Started the win for France, 5-2 against Colombia in their friendly. New era under Hervé Renard. Good play from Staniforth. She's holding her back though after making that challenge. Hampton closed down, manages to get the clearance away. Here's Lord Jordan Nobbs. Pursued by Erin Cuthbert as she does. She will not give anything up. Villa work it well though. Mailing into Nobbs. And now Darley. Gonna bounce out of play. Well, Emma Hayes doesn't look altogether happy with what's happening for the team, but <laughs> seems to be some sort of a drinks break here. Maybe the goalkeeper from the Chelsea. Need some treatment. I think it might have come from a little earlier, the Rachel Daly chance at the, the near post. She uh, just off the ball, it was behind the goal. She knocked her into the, the barrier behind the goal. And I don't know if it's, there's impact from that. So I don't know if we have, but yeah, I think it might be something that's come from that. Could be wrong. You see Emma Hayes really delivering her instructions. Looking very animated. As Villa are starting to create a few chances. It's interesting, the whole Chelsea team have come together there. You can see with Emma Hayes giving the instructions, whereas Aston Villa are two parts. Half the team are here with Carl Ward in front of the dugout and then probably the more experienced players in the middle of the park having a separate debate. I think she wants the game to restart as quickly as possible because they had some momentum. Musovic still receiving treatment she did take a tumble she did sort of collide with those advertising hoardings earlier and there's no Anne Catherine Berger in the squad today so you know, if this becomes a bit more serious Emily Orman the young goalkeeper who's yet to make her senior debut is on the bench let's have a look at this you can just you'll see once she uh she goes to collect the ball and she's just trying to delay it. Rachel Daly just stamps on the on the foot. You can see it off the ball. And I think that's what she was getting checked as she went down. She wasn't best pleased with that and she had a few words with Rachel Daly. That's slightly unnecessary from Daly. I would say uncharacteristic, but I'm not sure it is. <laughs> <laughs> Competitive player, Rachel Daly. 
There's a lot at stake here. Hansen gets the cross in, a little bit too much on that for Lehman, but she will get onto it, forced wide. It's a lovely ball to Nobbs. Lehman trying to pick out Darley. Nobbs towards the penalty area. And a swing from Stanifor. Held well by Musevic. Really good effort. Musevic has just made this attempt at goal from Lucy Staniforth look really easy. And from where we were sat, it certainly didn't look that way. And Lucy Staniforth just catches it. And it looks like it's going away from Musevic. And as I say, she's made the, 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 the save look really comfortable. But from where I'm sat, it looked a lot more difficult from, from what the save was made. Ericsson. Now Wrighton. Lurpols. Kurt. All the way back to Mara Mielda. That was a bit careless from Perise. It looked like she'd given up on it to start with, but play goes on with Lauren James. Now Chankovic. Jordan Nobbs sliding in on lower poles. Had to time that right, and she did. Into Lehman. Closed down by Carter. Wins it back for Chelsea. Cuthbert brings it away. Bit of space for Cuthbert. Drags it well wide. You see the frustration there in Cuthbert's face. She does really well to create herself half a yard. She shaped up to shoot and took the extra touch to get her balance right, and then just drags it wide. But this tackle here from Jordan Nobbs, time to perfection, a crucial tackle just inside the box to prevent Chelsea a chance at goal. You just see it here again, timed it perfectly well. Into the final minutes, the semi-final of the FA Cup. Villa holding their own. Against Chelsea, who we're in their 10th Cup semi-final since 2012. James buffeted, but she is hard to knock off the ball. Not enough on that pass out to Guru Wrighton, but it's given straight back to Chelsea and Erin Cuthbert. Find Wrighton. Villa go long. Two minutes of time added on. A great play from Cuthbert to spin away from the challenge and work the space. Chelsea try and go direct again to Sam Kerr. Hansen skipping away from one challenge, then another. Leopold's bringing her down. And this could be the final chance of the half. Slightly late there from low pulse. I actually thought she won the ball um, but from where I'm sat. So, yeah, it's a good job. We've got a good referee on the pitch and right on top of it that could see it. But Hansen's really grown into this game. The last, you know, the second half of the first half, she's uh, when she's been on the ball, she's really been direct and tried to make things happen for Villa. Staniforth delivers towards the back post. One well by Kerr. Well, Nobbs is dispossessed, and this could spell trouble for Villa. James with the chop away from Staniforth, not once but twice. Assessing her options, all the way back to Cuthbert, now Carter. Chankovic delivers, 
It's Perisay. Big chance. She has to hit the target from here. It's a must. I thought you, you could see here, really good delivery. And Perisay actually does really well. Just on comes on the inside of Hansen, who looks as if she's daydreaming. Sets up really nicely. She even had enough time to take a touch and, and cushion it down, but she has to hit the target. It's a big miss this from Perise and, and Chelsea on the dying, you know, the last kick of the first half. A real let off for Villa, who have had some really good moments in this first half, but haven't managed to take them while they've been on top. Kirsty Hansen and Rachel Daly have had a couple of opportunities. Chelsea haven't really performed at their best so far. They can go up a gear, Farrah. Oh, they certainly can go up a gear. I think they've played within themselves and controlled the first half and stayed in the first half. They've had the better of the, the chances uh, in this opening 45 minutes, but I certainly think they can up the gears in the second half and maybe we'll see that. Potentially, we could see a Chelsea change just to freshen it up. I feel like somebody like Charles would be an interesting one. Just give them a little bit of energy. Lauren James looks a little bit tired out here on the right-hand side. Normally, we're used to seeing her be more direct and go at players. She hasn't done that as much in this first 45 minutes, so the second half will be interesting to see what Emma Hayes does. Nothing between these two at the break. Half-time. Aston Villa nil, Chelsea nil. Thank you very much, Alex. So still goalless between Chelsea and Aston Villa in this semi-final of the FA Women's Cup. The prize, a chance to lift the trophy at Wembley on the 14th of May. And almost a game of two halves in the first half. Barrett, half-time seemed to come at a good time for Chelsea, although they did have that big chance right at the end. Yeah, I said when if Aston Villa were to up the intensity of their play, they could really try to uh, punish this Chelsea team. They hadn't done that until the last 10 minutes of the, of the first half, and they created some chances with that. But this Chelsea team always know how to stay in the game, and we saw that chance right at the half that, you know, that Pevense should have put away, and they could have gone into the half 1-0 up. So both teams come out on 0-0 at half-time. Fresh mindset and a big 45 minutes for both teams. There are no changes at the break. Flags are waving. The claret and blue. A lot of support for them. And we saw Penilla Harder warming up during the half-time break. A huge boost to have her back, still without Frank Kirby. Right and delivers the cross towards James. Shankovic off the post. Opening seconds of the second half and Chelsea nearly take the lead. Big chance for Chelsea and it's come from a flick on from Sam Kern. Right and just digs one out here towards the back of post. You see Lauren James just misses it. And it's Chankovic here with a strike, a difficult strike. And just hits the, the top, either the top of the crossbar, I think, or the post, but a really good strike. Maz Pacheco doesn't time the strike well, and it falls to Chankovic with a big chance. Villa nearly caught out very, very early on. But that's what Chelsea can do to you. It was a common theme this season, we say. They haven't looked at their best, and yet they still manage to keep winning. And that cup final defeat to Arsenal in February will still be hurting, I'm sure. Most definitely will be hurting these Chelsea players. You know, they have a winning mentality like no other, and that's why they've done so well over the years. So that, that cup final certainly will be hurting, and they want to get to another Wembley final. Almost a week to prepare Saturday at home to Barcelona at Stamford Bridge. First leg of their semi-final. Some really difficult games coming up for Chelsea, but they'll they'll be pleased with Harder being back on the bench and, and somebody that they can add to their squad. This is the chance. Great strike. Hits it nicely. And it is, it just comes off right at the top of the, the post, which looked as if it was the crossbar. But Maz Pacheco, her timing to, to clear the pass wasn't right. Did feel that Chelsea could 
go up a couple of levels. Through a right and clattered by Mailing. It's smart from Wrighton. She just uses the pace of the ball and to feel the defender mailing coming in and just gets her body, as you see here, in, in between and really late there for mailing. Wants to be aggressive, but um, isn't really anywhere near the ball. Not challenge. Ericsson. Manages to find Kurt. Harrisay on the overlap, forced away from goal, and the assistant referee's flagging for a foul. Darley standing in front of the assistant ref here, having a pop, I'm unsure what I'd like to see the replay. Too far away for us to see whether there was any contact, but Darley seems to think not. See here, the initial tackle looks fine, it's a soft one. We can see the frustration now of why Darley's so frustrated with that. Real soft, and it's a big chance for Chelsea right on the edge of the box. Just a little hand on the shoulder, perhaps, but yeah. Just too aggressive, according to the assistant referee. Be interesting if Chelsea do score from this. The reaction, and I'm sure Carla Ward won't be happy if they do. She certainly wasn't happy with the award. Wrighton goes low. Well fielded by Hannah Hampton. Hard and low here, you can see from Wrighton, hoping for that near post run and somebody just to get a touch on it, but Hannah Hampton does well just to collect the ball. Difficult opening to this half for Villa. Struggled to really get hold of the ball. You can hear Carla Ward. We're not too far away from her, but she is uh, airing her frustrations. Here's Kenza Dali. Had a few options to thread the ball through. Mailing goes for the chip. Oh! Well, that would have been spectacular. Luzovic was backtracking. It was a good effort, but an effort that wasn't supposed to go toward goal. And you can see that from Malin's reaction. She was trying to dink one to the far, far post, and in doing that, she actually nearly lobs Musevic there. And it was her reaction after she'd, uh, I'm saying, chipped, she delivered. She was a bit disappointed in that. But if it went in, I'm sure she wouldn't have been. Apologising there for the delivery that nearly went into the back of the net. <laughs> No question, Farrah, in I your would, mind. I, I, would, I wouldn't have apologised. I would have pretended I meant to hit towards goal, for sure. <laughs> Stand forth with a knock to the head. <laughs> yes, that came from Kenza Darley. Some been running towards goal, but she just held on to it for too long is the challenge on Staniforth. Really use of the elbow from Cuthbert. Yeah, slight use of the elbow. I think the, the difficulty is when you're so small and you use that leverage, you need it to get yourself up and challenge. And I'm sure there was nothing in it from Cuthbert. Yes, there was a slight contact. I think it was more the reaction of the ball hitting her after. <laughs> and Lucy Staniforth wasn't expecting it. Double whammy for Staniforth. <laughs> She's off the field, but she's come back on when allowed to by the referee. Sent down the line towards Lehman. Overcooked that pass, Leopold's. Yeah, really overcooked. Big heavy pass. wasn't wasn't needed. She had, she had enough time in the middle of the park just to take a touch. Maybe even go out the opposite side and switch the play out to Lauren James. Thirteen match unbeaten record in the FA Cup. Chelsea. Last 
defeat was in the semi-final to Everton back in 2020. Erin Cuthbert not very pleased with some of the attention that she was paid. Snapping at her heels. Decision. An award of a throw-in, by the way. <laughs> Nothing like being competitive in a semi-final, is there? Gets it out of her feet. Tries to pick out Perisay, but Kirsty Hansen was there. Gets past Perisay with ease. Now Darley. Jordanov's frustrated, felt that was a bit of an easier pass towards her. Jankovic calms things down. Just forced there from Dali. They had really good possession and could have made, him, made something of it. But, yeah, just a forced pass into Lehman when Jordanov's is probably the better option to progress the, the attack. different way from the game two weeks ago in the WSL. Chelsea were very, very comfortable 3-0 winners. It's always interesting when two teams meet each other back to back. Yeah, no game's ever the same or ever, ever as easy as you think it might have been at the first one. So I'm sure you heard in Emma Hayes before the game said she doesn't expect a, a, a same game or a game that was as comfortable as a WSL game. Patton stepping and intercepting. Stand fourth. Cuthbert did come off Patton. Vera Wright has got a bit of space to deliver. It's all a bit messy. Here's Lauren James. Chankovic, James, Chankovic once again. And the defenders cook off their mark to defend, but here's a chance, James. Block from Turner, still alive, Kurt, Carter, and now Wrighton. Well, they're doing their defensive duty well and eventually the referee blows the whistle for a foul and a free kick for Villa. The pressure is relieved. Wow, unbelievable defending, but the initial block, this, this block here from Turner is, is a match-winning block. You can see here Lauren James, the way that Turner gets herself in front of Lauren James' strike is fantastic. Not sure there was too much in the, this from right, and I'd like to see here on the replay a little shove. Probably as soft as the one that Pacheco gave away a little bit earlier in the free kick that was outside the box. Some of the Arsenal contingent here, perhaps supporting Anna Patton, who's on loan at Villa from Arsenal. Or Jordan Nobbs, their old teammate. Jordan Nobbs. No prizes to guessing who they'll be supporting today, let's just say that. <laughs> I reckon Chelsea. <laughs> Good play, Daly. Wow. She miscued that. Ericsson was very tight to her, so may have just put her off. 
think you can see here, Dali does really well here. Out on the left-hand side, just cuts back onto her right. Great delivery. Ericsson just allows Rachel Daly to just get behind, behind her. But I think in doing that, blocks Rachel Daly's vision of the ball coming in and it just hits her head, you can see there. Really good delivery here from Dali into a danger area. Ericsson doesn't know too much about Daly, but Daly doesn't know too much about the ball coming in. It's when those danger players, Dali, Daly, Hansen in particular, when they start to click, they look very potent in attack. Flag has stayed down. Here is Jordan Nobbs. Cross comes in. And Lehman! Side netting. Some of the fans inside the ground thought that was in. The net certainly rippled, but I wasn't sure. They come from behind the goal. Good delivery from Jordan. The clearance here just falls to her. Big chance for Villa, big chance for, for Lehman to hit the target at least from that distance. And it goes wide of the post and behind the back of the goal, and that's why the net was rippling the way it was. Came at her pretty quickly, but it was presented to her inside the box. Four goals this season, one in the FA Cup. Right and away from Sarah Mayling. Chankovic, lovely turn. Neat feet as well. Right and car! 1 0. Inevitable. What Sam Kerr does. Sam Kerr doesn't have to be in the game for long. She's done really well in the game in open play, you know, really helping the ball on, but gets herself inside the box. A fantastic delivery and she just gets the wrong side of the defender. Just as I said earlier in the game, she's so good at working the shoulder of centre half and does it perfectly well here and gets her head onto the ball and in the back of the net. You'll see it here, right in a great delivery. I was crying out for Chelsea players to get in the box. There was nothing in there from right and from the initial. Chankovic with beautiful feet here, really quick feet. And then this dink delivery that we're so used to seeing from Wrighton and Sam Kerr just pulling away from the centre half. I think she pulls away from Maz Pacheco here, gets herself in between. And a fantastic header at the back post, just rises above everybody. And she does it so often for this Chelsea team. It's a great header. Another magnificent leap. Goal number 24 for Chelsea this season for Sam Kerr. That is what Chelsea can do, and that is what they do on such a consistent basis. It's almost like they give up chances on purpose to lure you in, <laughs> and then they strike. They do, and we're so often so used to seeing right into Kerr, that dink pass to the back post, because Sam Kerr's movement is so good. It's a fantastic header. shrugs off the challenge now we're starting to see a little bit more urgency in Villa's play Fizza from Staniforth very far out I've been surprised if Musevic didn't deal with that but yes absolutely urgency and it's required from Aston Villa yeah it is they're going to have to up the intensity I've been saying it you know, throughout the game it's open in 60 minutes if they just up that intensity a little bit what sort of pressure could they put on this Chelsea team see Carla Ward when that goal went in she could see even before Sam Kerr had made contact she knew what the outcome was going to be I think everyone did inside the stadium I think we all did I already you know I could already see the move it's the movement Sam Kerr she's a joy to watch you know if you're a football person you're somebody that you, and certainly strikers some young strikers in terms of movement I really want to watch a good striker who has good movement get your eyes on Sam Kerr because she's fantastic for any young player to watch Mailing. Low ball across. Daly's there. Now Lehman. The layoff isn't great, but Jordan Nobbs gets there. Pacheco with the shot. Still Pacheco slips. More chances coming for Villa. They can't work a path towards goal. 
Musevic with another regulation save from Hansen this time. Yeah, it's a comfortable save. They had a big chance just before. I think the set from Hansen to Nobbs on the edge of the box was just over here. But a half chance from Hansen on the edge of the box and a comfortable save, as you said, from Musevic. It looks like Chelsea are ready to make a change. Sophie Ingle getting ready. A sparked Villa into life, though. It has, they have to come out now. They want to give themselves a chance of going to Wembley and they have to really get at this Chelsea team. It's certainly starting to see, just starting to see that. Dali has made up a lot of ground. Got out of play for a goal kick. And here comes the uh, Chelsea change. Sophie Ingle in action for Wales over the international break. And Melanie Leopold's. I'm sure it's a blessed relief to be able to take that mask off. Yeah, definitely. As I said before, I wouldn't have been able to play with that. Um, it's a like for like change here with Leopold's coming off and Ingle coming on. We've also got Neve Charles getting ready as well. And replacing the Lauren James, number 21, Neve Lauren Charles. James being withdrawn. It was one I mentioned at the half as they went in. I thought Emma Hayes might have done a little earlier, taken James off and brought on Charles, but they've done it now with, you know, 25 minutes remaining in the game. Lauren James, job done for this Chelsea team, she would think. And a more defence-minded player now coming into the game in Charles. Bit of a frustrating game for Lauren James, showed some flashes of her brilliance in the first half. Yeah, in and out of the game for me, Lauren James. It's difficult off the back of international when you're away from your teammates for a period of time. And, and Lauren James is just getting used to the international scene. You know, she's only been, been, been called into the last few camps with the senior camp, so it's different. It'll be different loading on her body being away and having to come back and play a, you know, a game three days or four days after an international fixture. Crowd really getting behind Villa now. Hansen delivers over Daly. Lehman couldn't control. Some of the crosses into the box have been excellent. Yeah, another, it's, it comes from that left-hand side again. And this time it was Hansen with a really good delivery. Stands up the defender, pushes it past, and it's a great delivery. But Rachel Daly just too early with her movement, and the ball goes over her head. Patton sends it forward. Lovely touch, Jordan Nobbs. Finds Lehman. Off Carter. And spins out of play for a corner. They've got a you know, set pieces, as I mentioned before, can be a big weapon for them if they get it right. Staniforth delivers towards Daly. It's a good delivery, much better delivery from Lucy Staniforth into a danger area, but a difficult one for, for Rachel Daly to get up above and to hit it on target, especially under that amount of pressure. She's done well to win the header, you know, with three Chelsea defenders around her. She's been shackled, really, so far in this game, at least. A quarter of the FA Cup tie remaining. Hansen. Drawing another run at the Chelsea back line. They get back in numbers and defend their box well. Turner preventing Sam Kerr 
latching onto that ball over the top. Mailey into Nobbs, controls that beautifully. Not on the same wavelength as Lehman, but Mailing battles for it. Lehman brings it away from Carter. Decision is corner. You could just see there, Jordan Nob needed. I think it was Lehman just to stay behind her. She had her back to goal, so she wasn't going to be able to make a forward pass. So a little bit of confusion, but they managed to work a corner from it. Good spell. And they make the breakthrough. Just five sheet, clean sheets in the last ten for Chelsea. Slightly unconvincing. Mailing digs it back in towards Anna Patton. Hansen. That's what she was trying to do, but. Might come off. Message clears upfield towards Sam Kerr. Again, Turner gets there first. Kenza Dali. Just ran out of play. Chelsea having to do a lot of work off the ball, but they seem happy to do it. They do, and I think that's been a change in this Chelsea team this season. I think we're so used to seeing the Chelsea team play with a lot of possession and create a lot of chances, but with the injuries they've had, they've actually adapted to that really well, and they've been able to you know, manage games, play without possession, and play in those transition moments really well. So they certainly look a lot more comfortable defending without the ball now. Third change for Chelsea. Jesse Fleming replacing Erin Cuthbert to pull out of international duty with Scotland because of a slight injury. So perhaps just easing her back in. Finds Eve Charles. Still 20 minutes to go. Charles will probably keep this long ball in as well. She's really quick. She's done well to keep it in. Getting herself into the box. And exceptionally well. Nearly found Sam Kerr as well. Second best to that. Pacheco had a big head start. She still managed to get there. Here's Kenza Dali. Fleming. I see the game starting to open up a little bit. I think it will suit Chelsea if the game does open up more than it would Aston Villa. Chelsea on course for yet another Wembley final. Confirmation of the change for Chelsea in the last few moments. Replacing number 22, Erin Cuthbert. Number 17, Jesse Flynn. That flurry of chances. Chelsea now starting to put back their control. Charles and a tussle. Darley. They're trying to work their way in tight spaces. Daly. Chelsea made three changes. Villa still yet to bring on any subs. I was just looking at the bench to see if they have to bring on to make any sort of change, and they are nursing some ACL recovery, so it's not a game that you'd bring players on 
or into the game, you know, when you need to go and chase and win. A foul on Fleming. Yes, most of the substitutes for Villa did a warm up and during the break, but McGill and Allen, who the ones who are back from ACL injuries, didn't take part in it. Yeah, so I'm not sure. I think they're named on the bench. I'm not sure they'll be able to play many minutes. And certainly, I'm not sure you'd want to come into a, a game like this, your first game back from a, a long-term injury. But they have Little John on the bench, midfielder. Could that change anything in the midfield? Could they bring her on? Experienced player. Ball for Chelsea. They still have a few options. Blinkilla Brown, who's made a lot of appearances, the youngster, this season. She's an exciting player. Blinkilla Brown, really, really exciting player for them. One that I know Carla Ward really likes and, and thinks really highly of and knows she's got a, a bright future in this Villa team. The corner for Chelsea. Brighton towards Charles. It's a lovely touch from Jess Carter to keep that one in. Here's Charles. Back to Carter. Chankovic picking up space between the lines. Her offside. Chankovic has picked up some really good positions in between the lines, as you mentioned there, and able to turn. She's really grown into the game. See here, great position, and Sam just Sam Kerr just runs herself offside. Chankovic maybe could have delayed the pass and allowed Sam Kerr to come back into play. in the final quarter of an hour. Chelsea not home and dry yet. Certainly looked sluggish at times. It's a good ball towards Lehman, cleared by Ericsson. Towards the goalkeeper. A comfortable stop from Musevic. And a lot of those players will be in action. Wednesday night, Manchester United against Arsenal in the Women's Super League on BBC Three. Five past seven. And Katie McCabe will probably be sat in the same position as she suspended after five Vienna cards. So she'll be probably sat there with the kids babysitting on Wednesday night as well. Very good point. She's, got the she's going to be babysitting she's, again then. It looks as if she's bored the baby to sleep here. <laughs> She does that quite well. And we've got headphones and an iPad, so the conversation doesn't sound exactly exhilarating. I'm not sure she has much conversation anyway. <laughs> I'm no only comment. joking. <laughs> <laughs> Katie knows I love her, really. You better hope he's not listening to our commentary. <laughs> he can relay that. <laughs> Those big games just keep coming, and Aston Villa play both Arsenal and Manchester United in the run-in in the WSL so they could have huge influence on where the title goes still really hard to predict and who of the four is going to miss out on Champions League football it's going to be such a huge blow because it's going to be close 
it's going to be really close. Mailing. Lehman. Unmarked. Chance. Again, in a good position, angle tight, but couldn't hit the target. They do well here with uh, Lehman. Initially does well to face up and just lay it off in, in a wide area. Continues their run and becomes re free inside the box. It's a great effort. It's just it, she's hit it in the right area. You want to hit it across goal and hope that you know one of your strikers or the opposite wide player is going to come in off the line and get onto that. It's a good effort. And maybe she was more expecting somebody to come in and get on the end of it. Still very much in this. We were just a few seconds away from extra time yesterday at Leeds Sports Village. I thought Brighton was really good yesterday, give a, a fantastic account of themselves under new management as well. So a difficult one for them to come into in a semi final. Pace from Charles to pull it back for Kerr. Well, that'll go down as a big miss for Sam Kurt, usually buries them. She does, and, and Charles just doesn't give up on a ball. So this is a, a ball that, you know, we'd assume is going out of play. She doesn't give up on it, does really well to keep it in. And Sam Kurt, she does, Sam Kurt actually does really well to adjust her body to get any type of contact. And she would have hoped for that to have gone in, but a big chance. That probably would have been game over as it is. Villa still in this. Pacheco. Hansen receives it beautifully. It's a really good ball in. Lehman picks it up. Carter. Does well initially. Lehman comes away with it. Staniforth. Hansen. That's a good first touch. Daly. Fell for her. I'm not sure she's expecting it. She scuffed the effort. Hansen does really well here to get a touch on this, and then it's the ball just goes through Mielder's legs and falls to Daly, and she just lashes at it. No control in her strike here from Daly. But this is a fantastic delivery from Hansen. Similar to the one Lehman put across the box, and Lehman gets on to the end of it, but really good delivery. Yes, right, a couple of good balls into those areas, no one there on the end of them. Here's Hansen. There are numbers in the middle now. Ericsson sticks out a leg. Hansen will get another go here. It's towards Lehman. Darley! Another opportunity passed up. You can see the frustration there in Darley's face. She has to hit the target. But again, it comes from Hansen out on his left-hand side. Had a really good game. Good delivery and the clearance just falls to Darley. And she just smashes it over. Not really controlled enough for a player of her quality. But Hansen down that left-hand side for Villa all afternoon has been fantastic. I think she's had a really good duel up against Perise. I like... You know, the duel that's happened down that side. Real encouragement for Carla Ward. Created plenty. Just lack that little bit of composure, perhaps. on the pitch. And Darley wants to hear that quickly. <laughs> 
still hope. Big 10 minutes for Villa. Big 10 minutes. And I think if anything, if they are to create anything, it is going to come down that left-hand side with Hansen. any of the forward options. Hansen. Again, great close control. Dali. On to Mailing. Lehman. Daly sliding in another move of real promise. Staniforth. Some claims of a handball, look like on the top of the shoulder from Jess Carter. Darley trying to find Daly. Chance mailing off the post! How close can you get? They're certainly pushing Aston Villa from, you know, delivery from wide areas and picking up second balls. You can see here the delivery just falls to mailing. Fantastic touch! She hits it hard and low, and I think the bobble actually goes against her. It bobbles, that then takes it onto the post. So, luckily for Chelsea, the bobble was there, because it's a great strike, hard and low, and it just bobbles. Just there, you just see the bobble, and it actually takes it away from the goal and hits off the post. The surface not Villa's friend. And Emma Hayes was saying that they wanted to play at Villa Park because they wanted a better playing surface. Yes. <laughs> that might have just saved them and seen them into a final of another FA Cup. I don't think she wanted to be reminded of that comment after that. But Chelsea now inviting pressure. Really do not look composed in defence. throwing caution to the wind as they have to do five minutes of normal time to force extra time Chankovic it was Marimielda actually matching Hansen and wanting a foul but not getting it Shoulder to shoulder. A long looping ball towards Patton. And Patton stayed down now. And the referee's going to have to stop this. See what happened here. She challenges Ingle. Doesn't look much in it. The target of those deep corners. Very tall. Good in the air. Mailing force back to Patton. Flick from Rachel Daly. That's pretty much all she could do with that. Flag is up. 
today's official attendance rate oh. at 5,292. That's 5,292. 5,292 in attendance. Excellent attendance here at the Poundland Bescott Stadium. And uh, another change for Chelsea. Johanna Reeting Canarid on for the final couple of minutes for Guro Wrighton. Patton wins it. Carter with a slightly rushed clearance. Mailing. Carter in the right place to repel Nobbs's cross. Back with Staniforth. Darley. Shields the ball well. Nobbs delivers, flicked on. And Kirsty Hansen can direct it back towards goal. They've had some chances, Villa. This is a, a driven ball from Jordan Nobbs, a slight touch from Anna Patton. And Hansen round the back, just too late to get any sort of contact on it. It looks like Patton has taken the uh, Millie Bright England role up front when they do have possession, trying to get the ball forward. If she can win your headers. Her nods forward. Darley allowed to turn. Runners forward. Hansen. Brilliant challenge from Perise. But Hansen doesn't give it up. Again, a dangerous ball in. Out of play. Another, another fantastic delivery down that left-hand side from Hansen. See here, she gets away with one here, falls back to her, just drives it. And there's no Villa player to get any sort of touch on it. It's a great delivery, right in the danger area, where you want the ball to go. A couple of seconds to go until full-time, unless we have a, another dramatic finish here. But Farrah Williams, your vitality player of the match. It's been a difficult one. I think Hansen down that left-hand side for Villa all afternoon has been fantastic, but I can't look past Sam Kerr, you know, which potentially could be the match-winning goal. The role she's played has been fantastic in this Chelsea team when they've been direct and needed and out. She's a willing runner and she's been fantastic in the goal that could take them to Wembley. And here she is running the channels. Not afraid to do a job for the team as well, Sam Kerr. Could be, yet again, the match winner for Chelsea. What an important player she's been, and pretty much has been the difference today. I think so. I think she's been fantastic. And certainly, you know, we spoke about Chelsea playing without possession, and they're able to do that when they have a striker like Sam Kerr in their team. Daly, time running out for Villa to four minutes of added time. Nobbs delivers. because that is the aspect that has been missing from Aston Villa today. They've performed so well for the most part. Just that clinical edge has been missing. The difference, Sam Kerr's movement inside the box, the one chance, she needs one chance inside the 18-yard box, and she's guaranteed to score, and she's proved that today. Kerr, trying to get away from Turner. Heads for the corner flag. More seconds. Etch away. Turn on the pressure. Ball's back to Hannah Hampton. You can see Carla Ward urging her team up the field. She's been hoping for one last chance, one big chance. Still a couple of minutes remaining. Sent forward, Ericsson wins the header, unopposed. Hansen takes it down. 
they know time is running out, so there's a few desperate passes creeping in now. Here's Nobbs, takes aim. Right down the keeper's throat. And no one's closing the keeper down so they can eat away a few more seconds. Good strike here from Jordan Nobbs, one we're used to seeing normally, you know, hit the back of the net, but a comfortable save from Musevic here, straight down the middle. Really comfortable, didn't really have to do anything. Oh, by Sam Kurt. Carl Ward directing air traffic. Only in one direction. Nearly on the pitch. Telling them to get up the field. Launch forward. Towering header from Ericsson. Oh, and Kirk is all on her own here. Put the game to bed. She really can. A free run at goal. It's Kerr. Oh. Excellent save from Hannah Hampton. Seconds remaining. Villa still alive, just. Hampton's had so little to do in the second half. Daly wins the header, gathered by Musevic. And that might just be that. Anguish on the face of Carla Ward. It's all over. Chelsea had the chance to wrap things up through Sam Kerr. Hannah Hampton denied her, but Kerr's strike, not for the first time, is the difference. Chelsea heading to Wembley for the FA Cup final and on course for a third trophy in a row. Oh, they were made to work for this. Aston Villa gave everything. But Chelsea, as they do, found a way. And it will be Chelsea against Manchester United in that showpiece final at Wembley.